Okay, hey everybody, welcome back. All right, so it's time to move on to that very next step, and that is using Suricata, your IDS. Suricata is basically a response to Snort. Snort had a lot of issues. Snort had this massive global install base as being a free intrusion detection system. And it had a massive community of people around the world who wrote signatures and tried to help the product. Snort was single threaded. So the Open Source Foundation, several people got together and created Suricata. Suricata is an open source IDS that basically has the same rule format as Snort, but it was meant to answer a lot of the shortcomings of Snort. It's multi-threaded, it can do regular IDS, it can do inline, it can do IPS stuff, you can use it as an NSM solution, network security monitoring solution, you can do offline PCAP analysis with it. Um, there are so, so, so many things. Um, it is crazy powerful. And you've got a large open source community of people constantly writing signatures for it. So you will see the emerging threats uh, signatures are updated pretty much every eight hours. I mean, it's it's that world. They're really, really working to ensure that, that Suricata grows and doesn't go away and doesn't get consumed and turned into a commercial product. You've gone through this process of starting with PCAPs and sorting them down and whittling them down into, into digestible formats. And then you wrote these filters for really unique pieces of traffic. And now these really unique pieces of traffic, you might want to run these through Suricata. Let's do that. This is not sitting at an IDS waiting for alerts. You're taking PCAPs and running individual sets of PCAPs through Suricata to see if anything lights up. We've got the rule format, which is basically like Snort, the IDS can alert, log, or drop. It can alert, flash an alert to the screen. It can log, don't take an action, just record the packet. It can drop, actually take action and drop the packet. The next portion is the protocol. Now the protocol can be TCP, UDP, ICMP, HTTP, DNS, it can be all that kind of stuff. Then after that, it's got the source IP. The source IP can be an IP address. The source IP can be a variable, like here, dollar sign home net. You'll see down in here, do you see how these variables are defined? You can say home net equals these ranges, and then you can put in the ranges of them. You can say my HTTP servers equals, and then you can put in a variable or the ranges for those and you can say, okay, here's the port groups. These are web ports. Like you can get down in here and you can put in 80, 80. You can put in 10,000. Maybe you run Webmin in your environment. So these are web ports for you. But you can do all of this to make your rules easier for you when you're writing rules. You can make the source IP a variable right here's the source port. Then you've got the destination variable or destination IP or destination range like slash 24. And then the destination port. Then you've got the message. This is what's gonna show up on the analyst screen. You're gonna notice almost any rule that has the letters ET in it is an emerging threats rule. That means the community has produced this rule. The only other piece you really need to pay attention to is this part that says content. Content is the actual signature. It's the actual thing it's looking for. So if in the packet it sees the word NIC in all caps, it's gonna say, okay, you're probably communicating with an IRC channel. Um, IRC bots do that. So like if you do IRC command list, you will see that NIC is one of those commands that you use when you're joining an IRC channel. And that's how a lot of command and control works for internet relay chat bots, like an egg drop bot that communicates and manages its victims that way, part of a botnet. So you'll see it join channels. So you'll see slash join slash Nick, these commands like right in here. 
So these are all the types of commands that you'll see. These are IRC commands. Uh, so that's what he's writing a rule for. His rule is just looking for the word NIC. Um, so it's a pretty simple rule. It's going from anywhere to anywhere on slash NIC. It probably would have been better to make right here the destination port 6667, which is the IRC port. Uh, would have been what I would have done for that rule. But pretty easy for how to write rules. What I recommend that you do is make an output directory for where that data is going to go. We already looked at the suricata.yaml file. That's basically the config file. And then dash R wants you to read a PCAP file and then put it output to this folder. It's going to create a suri.fast file. And then it's also going to create a JSON file. If you saw here how it's talking about how it can do these input and output formats like YAML and JSON, all JSON is is a data structure for how you want data to be represented. It's written like regular code, but it's always the label colon the data. Label colon the data. So it's just telling you, hey, this is how I write stuff. It's got squigglies for code execution brackets and they have to be nested and tabbed over. So it's just saying, here's how I store data. That's all that is when it's telling you it's in JSON format. Not that bad, pretty easy to follow. Let's get in here and let's actually do this. I would run Suricata against one of the smaller PCAPs. I wouldn't run it against something large, just lights up like a Christmas tree. Um, I mean, obviously you can, I'm not saying that you can't, but if you've done all that purpose of whittling stuff down, you wanna know if individual things fire. And then if they fire, you can rip through the logs and see them. What I like to do is to cat that JSON file, break them up into the individual timestamps and you'll see that it sorts them by number, and then I like to read them individually. Let's go take a look. Let's see what that looks like. Let's jump in and let's run that, huh? So we're gonna make a directory called Suricata. We're gonna CD into the Suricata directory. We're gonna wget down that PCAP file. Remember, wget is for web get. We're gonna make the output directory, Suri. That's what this is right here. And when we run against this config file, we want the output to go there. We're gonna CD into that Suri directory and there's a stats file. We're gonna read that stats file. After that, that eve.json file that it creates, I'm gonna rip through that and cut it up by timestamp an individual HTTP request, that's what I'm doing here. And then those will be labeled XX and then a number, and then we'll read them each, each out individually. So I'm gonna do these right now. So now you can see he's running, and this is him actually parsing that PCAP file right down here. He's actually running right now, okay? Now it's finished. It's parsed that file, 745 packets. This is how many bytes. Now I'm jumping into that Suri directory. Let's go look at that stats log file. So we go look at that and you'll see that he broke down each of these different packets by the type, what layer they were at, what protocol they were at. Is it HTTP? Is it DNS? All of that stuff is all broken out. And we can see how much data went through all of it. Now, if we jump down in here, you'll see we don't have much, right? We've got the stats file, we've got the fast.log, and then we've got this JSON file. Now, if you go through that JSON file, you see that sucker looks like this. It's a mess. So remember, like I said, it's always squigglies, code execution brackets, the label, colon, the data right? Label colon the data. Label colon the data. Label source IP colon the data. So again, it's not necessarily bad, right? But it's, it's, 
it's kind of hard to read. And if you want to grep it, you know, grep it for like a particular IP address, it's just, it doesn't grep very well. It's kind of a mess. So what I like to do is I like to run a little extended grep, look specifically for HTTP, use this uh, JQ command, and the JQ command allows me to break up and join data based on fields. Flexible JSON command parser, right? Command line JSON parser, baby. So it gives us a way to rip up JSON from a command line. So it's just handy. Talk about super handy. I want to split this stuff on the timestamp and on HTTP, and then I want to use CSplit to break up these fields with these colons in between this stuff. Break that stuff up in between the squigglies. So I'm going to go like this, and then it rips these suckers down into these individual numbers. Now, if I do an LS in there, you see how now I have these double X and then the numbers. So I can cat XX01 like this. And now you can see that individual packet nicely and neatly broken out and set up for me. So I can see the host name. Okay. And this is the data. I can see the URL. Okay, that's the data. I can see the web user agent. And then that's the data. So it's so much nicer for me to be able to rip through this stuff. And now I can go through each individual request individually. And now do you kind of see why? I was like, guys, you don't want to do this across massive PCAPs, right? You, you really don't want to do that. You want to do these against smaller PCAPs. If you need to be able to look through stuff individually, you want to do this. The other benefit about breaking stuff up into JSON is now you can have it consumed by your other products like Splunk. So you have enough data here that you can start saying, okay, this, I can make a rule out of this. It's not bad. Remember the process. You go to a network, you're hunting. You're not doing incident response. You're, you tell the customer, hey, let's record traffic for five minutes uh, every hour on the hour, right? And let's just get a feel of what's out there. So I'll run those PCAPs through PRADS, get an idea of what's out there on the network, turn around and run those through Chaos Reader, break those down into individual data streams with unique URLs and say, okay, well, where is this traffic? connecting to that's unique. Maybe I'll look up all those URLs on virus total or something like that to go, hmm, you know, is it really doing what I think it's doing? And then T Shark will whittle that stuff down even more. And now we go, yeah, these are interesting to me. Something about these few packets. Let's run these individual packets through an IDS like Suricata and see if any of them flag. And then you go, no, none of these flag, but these sure look interesting to me. And if I see more packets like this in the future, I'd want something to let me know. So let's go ahead, let's write some rules for them. That's it. And now the last thing is to use Yara. And that's what we're gonna do in our next video. I hope that was helpful, guys. See you in the next video.